Hi, I'm Don. Today we paint by the slap chop method. This time we're painting with contrast paints. No kidding. So <laughs> we're painting Grimm's called miniature and turn it into this. I had so much fun painting this Grimm's called miniature and I spent a bit more time than usual with the painting. Hi, I'm Don. Welcome to my studio. Other than my patrons, this channel is supported by all these awesome brands. So today we're painting Slap Chop. The Slap Chop method made famous by the bigger, really big channels because, I mean, Slap Chop in my understanding is zenithal underpainting, dry brushing of the white, I, I did this with my previous videos but I do not paint with contrast paints or army painter speed paints. That's why I don't call my painting method um, slap chop. I call it sketch and glaze simply because I don't, I don't use contrast paints. This video I think is true slap chop. I know the, the name is funny, but what I did here is I added like a yellow filter with Liquitex ink, which is I really like these days because, well, they're awesome. And then after having like getting a nice underpainting with yellow, I then use some contrast paints. This is, to be honest, my first time to paint a whole miniature with this um. I simply don't use or even show contrast paints or citadel paints in this channel before because I was too loyal with Vallejo. But this time, I'm in the verge, not in the verge. Basically, this video marks like the start of me painting with different paint brands. Basically, choosing paints and not brands but paints that would do the work efficiently like for example i need a quick shade then i might use a contrast paint or i need a nice very flowing recess painting then i might use liquitex ink but when i want glazing or glaze layering most likely i'll use scuttlefish colors However, I might still use Vallejos of course, depending on the colors. There are like a few Vallejo paints that I cannot leave without. Although I do have other paints like P3 paints and also, uh, of course I also have Citadel paints. So we'll choose the paints that I'll use in my future videos depending on what I want to achieve and if that paint will like get me to what I want in terms of the final look so if it's opacity i'll get i'll use like paints that are very opaque if it's glazy i want glazing i'll use i'll use cuttlefish colors and then for quick shades i might use contrast paints and inks but for this one the main bulk of the painting was with contrast paints and the thumbnail says can you do like display level-ish painting with contrast paints of course not don't get me wrong guys but but i think i need to try army painter speed paints too but i mean don't get me wrong i love the contrast paints i enjoy the painting with those paints so much with this grim's called miniature However, I feel and I think you cannot like produce this play levelish quality painting with just contrast paints. Of course, I think that's obvious. You see in the video that like really quick base colors with contrast paints is very much achievable, especially with certain colors like Baal Red and the black contrast paint and the Orc Flesh. Those are very opaque. You have to tone them down with mediums or water if you like water because they're pretty opaque for a contrast paint. So I don't have all of the contrast paints, but I have, I think like 15. I'm not really sure or 18 and I have enough and the consistency is weird but I really enjoyed painting with them. So after laying down the base colors with contrast paints to really level up or improve the painting of your miniature, 
well, you have no choice but to do layering or glaze layering and even glazes to like improve the overall look of the model. Most especially if you're painting non-metallic metal, it's I think, I'm not sure but I will try, it's impossible to produce non-metallic metal with just contrast paint. Also, it's kinda impossible, I think, to produce nice textures with contrast paints and of course, really nice highlights that will really give you nice contrast with your painting. So, you have to paint the highlights, you have to paint textures to your miniature to have a display-ish level painting. This may not be obvious in the video but the great thing about having contrast paints at hand or even inks is that you could overdo the highlighting. You could actually even highlight with just ivory or white and then tone it down later again with contrast paints. Some people do this I think but I, I don't do this. I, I like painting different colors but I do use ivory if the base colors are similar and and then I tone that down with glazes, but not with contrast paints. But if you want a quicker glazing or filtering, contrast paints will do. You just need to wick your brush. For the skin though, it's super nice to paint with contrast paints. But of course, you have to paint the highlights like manually and like improve the overall contrast of the miniature. But using contrast paints over zenithal underpainting will produce nice skin tone like a generic skin tone. And you just need to improve it with more highlights with light flesh or fairy flesh. Now it's time for that, I mean it's that time of the video that I will thank all my patrons. This guys, I cannot like do full time miniature painting without the support of these people, my bronze and silver level patrons and of course my gold level patrons who have access to the longer tutorial versions of my videos. And of course, my platinum level patrons, which are crazy awesome, and my highest tier patrons, my palladium tier, Marco Colucci, Matt A, Kaiju, and Big Kitty Paints. Now it's time for our golden lemon reveal. So, much like airbrushing, Contrast Paints is a great, really quick way, very relaxing and very fun way to paint the base colors. Once you have the zenithal underpainting, it's really quick to build or paint the base colors. But to really improve your painting, you have to paint in the textures and more highlights and even add more shades for a display level-ish painting. That's it, Pansit. 